हेलो एंड नमस्कार एस्पिरेंट्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस वेरियस एमसीक्यू क्वेश्चंस दैट हैज बीन ऑलरेडी आस्ड इन सिनर्जी एंड इन द वेरियस एग्जाम्स कंडक्टेड बाय डिफरेंट कंपनीज फॉर द रिक्रूटमेंट प्रोसेस फॉर अ टीएमई वी विल डिस्कस ऑल दिस क्वेश्चंस एंड दिस वी विल टेक रेफरेंस फ्रॉम द अदर वेबसाइट्स आल्सो टू डिस्कस ऑल दिस क्वेश्चंस नाउ लेट्स स्टार्ट्स Our first question is: Precision engine bearing inserts are manufactured with a small portion of the bearing ends extending beyond the bearing housing or caps. The installation process of these bearings requires sufficient, and the options are cross, overlap, lap or lead, protrusion, and the correct answer should be cross. Uh, now let's check. Yes, the correct answer is cross. Now let's check what actually crush looks like in the bearing. Crush in bearing, yes. Uh, the crush, uh, the bearing crush or nip. It is also known as nip. Somewhere maybe it is written that nip is the gap between the halves of the bearing housing after the bearing has been inserted and the housing properly tightened. Now let's check how it looks like. Yes, you can see here the applicated portion. of the bearing this is called nip or crush and uh, you can see clearly yes this is the image the, this is the correct image which is showing the bearing crush yeah you can see the uplifted portion and this is called bearing crush height now we will check uh, we will study what is its purpose purpose of crushing bearing yes yes by increasing surface contact between the bearing and the connecting rod housing board crush reduces crushing reduces bearing movement it reduces the bearing movement and helps to compensate for the board deformation and aids in heat transfer in simple words the bearing crush is always what keeps the bearing in place or uh, its main purpose is to keep the bearing in place otherwise uh, due to its movement the the lubrication passage may get blocked and uh, right now to move to the next question the method of piston cooling in which oil is delivered through the connecting rod to a compartment within the piston then distributed by the motion uh, sorry by the motion of the pistons and allowed to drain to the crankcase via one or more holes or pipes is termed and the options are quaker seeker uh, circulation spray uh, the correct answer should be seeker right yes seeker now let's see what is seeker in piston cooling seeker in piston cooling system yeah cocktail shaker cooling it is also known as cocktail shaker cooling you must have seen in the bar you may have seen sorry you may have seen in the bar that uh, the bar tender are making cocktail by shaking the glass by putting the juices or whatever wine whatever the things there is between the two glasses and moving uh, to and fro motion right is there are machines also cocktail shaker cooling is commonly used term to describe heat transfer in a reciprocating hollow cylinder partially filled with a liquid keep in mind that uh, the cylinder hollow cylinder pass um, hollow cylinder passages uh, are not completely filled here they are partially filled okay now let's see how it looks like okay you can see in the images this is the right image right yes i think so uh, this is the nozzle type of cooling and uh, where is the correct image where i can see i think this is the right image uh, yes you can see the path for the cooling oil going inside the hollow spaces inside the piston and from after cooling uh, and doing its purpose it's going through this path and returning back right and this is the part of the piston and this part is called crown this is the upper part and it comes in direct contact with the combustion 
and um, this part is the skirt and this is the connect piston rod right okay and let's move to the third question the piston rod scrapper box incorporated in a two stroke cycle crosshead diesel engine serves to and the options are eliminate the necessity for an oil scrapper ring prevent side thrust and cylinder scoring prevent sludge and dirty oil from entering the crankcase scrap oil and carbon deposits of the cylinder walls and its correct answer should be prevent sludge and dirty oil from entering the crankcase yes right uh, now let's see how the piston rod scrapping box looks like okay piston rod yes you can see the images these all are the images of piston rod scrapper boxes piston rod scrapper box is also known as a stuffing box we will take a look uh, of the better image okay we will take its dismantle part uh, dismantled image mm. yes this is one of the correct image describing the scrapper box a scrapper ring you can see there are a number of rings uh, scrapper rings for contaminated oil cast sealing ring and then at the last oil scrapper rings is here okay and uh, you can see from this path the, ac the ac accumulated oil is passing a piston moving up oil return to the crankcase by drilling yes uh, yes cooling i don't think so piston moving oil return to the crankcase piston moving down scrapped oil collected at the bottom yes this is the piston uh, the oil is being collected here and it goes and any oil that is not scrapped off is scrapped by another set of rings and then led to the drain to the telltale hole open ended outside engine the tbn number of the cylinder oil is higher than the cylinder uh, crankcase oils so we can't mix the cylinder oil with the crankcase oil so we need to scrap the extra oil in a separate space okay that's why it is being separated at uh, in this portion you can see any oil that is not scrapped off or is scraped by another set of rings okay and uh, you can see we can see the images also more much more clear images yes there is a garter ring arrangement which uh, fix it uh, yes the uh, the purpose of the garter ring is to keep it assembled right so that it doesn't get disassembled uh, we will see the purpose what are the other purposes is there any other purposes also we will see piston rod stuffing box is used in large two stroke marine diesel engine to have sealing between the under piston scavenger space and crankcase it's a mainly works as a separation between the crankcase space and the piston scavenger space right and it uh, it restricts the movement of the sludge uh, from going inside the crankcase space now let's move to the next question in a large slow speed main propulsion diesel engine which of the parts listed is under tension when the engine is running uh, we, this is the one of the simplest question i think a bed split should not be here and uh, it should be the tire rod tire rod yes it's the tire rod Uh, we will see how the tire rod looks like in the main diesel engine marine diesel engine or marine engine uh, 
yes tie rod is a long strong rod with bolt or tie bolts at both the ends uh, let's see in image how it looks like yes this is the correct depiction of the tie rod yes you can see this image this two long rods is the are the tie rods it keeps the uh, tens it takes the tensile uh, uh, it always in tensile loaded and it keeps the entablature frame and the bed plate aligned and uh, we will look for the its material also because in many interview uh, it has been asked what is the material for the tie rod what material is it tie bolt or tie rod tie bolt are usually made of low carbon steel and we will take a look of for its purpose what is its purpose so that you can clearly understand yes its main function is to hold the three major engine components as i have already said uh, told you uh, the cylinder block or entablature a frame and the crankcase in compression in compression so that uh, that's why uh, the tie rod is always in tensile loading okay and transmits the firing load to the bed plate bed plate from the bed plate it goes to the hull structure and all okay is there anything else no the main advantage of unit injector combined fuel pump and injector over the fuel injection system other fuel injection system is the lack of high pressure fuel lines the le the relatively low injection pressures reduced wear of spray orifices the lessened chance of fuel leaks in to the engine sum and its answer should be the lack of high pressure fuel lines uh, because if we uh, use a unit injector and then the pump the fuel pump and injector are combined so we don't need any pressure line as the pump is already installed with the injector and uh, from the injector uh, from the fuel pump it is directly going inside the injector let's see how the unit injector uh, looks like unit injector yes you can see this is a unit injector and unit pump system yes you can see its various parts plunger follower follower re spring follower guide stop pin plunger and injector body control pinion gear control rack control rack is used to uh, control the delivery of the fuel sealing rings pinion spacer pist location pin spill deflector sleeve funnel shaped upper parts and all these parts we must uh, what uh, what are the other advantages also we will see advantages yes you can see the advantages the advantage of the unit injector system is that there is no high pressure line between the high pressure pump and the injector nozzle because they are combinedly attached they, there is no distance between them and in the old model you can see uh, fuel injection system fuel injection system
Yes. No, no, no. Yes, you can see here. In this system, the fuel pump is separate. It is not attached with the injector. That's why uh, here the fuel is being pressurized and there is a pressure line over here and from the distribution block to this part and uh, this high pressure line may cause uh, there is a chance of uh, any mishaps if it bursts or if it is not maintained properly okay that's why the fuel injectors and the fuel pumps are combined they are known as unit injectors now let's move to the next question Passages are drilled in the crankshaft of the diesel engine to provide lubricating oil to the main bearings, connecting rod bearings, piston push bearings, all of the above. It should be all of the above. There is a passage built inside the crankcase. Okay, let's see. yes you can see in in this image clearly right but this is this image is not so clear okay let's see some few other images yes you can see in this image hmm. here is the sump and uh, oil uh, Oil, uh, oil there is a strainer from the strainer oil goes to the oil pump from the oil pump uh, it goes to the oil pressure gauge one side and uh, from this portion uh, it goes to the main bearing through the passages it goes to different positions uh, one at there is a passage uh, openings here in the main bearings at the crank pin bearings and all these places are lubricated in such a way manner from the from af after lubricating the main bearing here in this uh, it goes to the up uh, upper portion and it is uh, sometimes it also goes the uh, goes to the cross head and it lubricates over there connecting rod bearing uh, top end bearing or uh, also okay let's see what are the advantages of it advantages the advantage of it is that there is no separate pipelines is required for it okay let's see some other images also uh, there are different types of lubrication also like a splash lubrication and this is only used in small engines now let's move to the next question when may the crankcase ventilation pipes or oil drain pipes of two or more engines be connected uh, there is clear indication there is no interconnection between the ventilation pipes and the oil drain pipes The main function of the tire rods in the construction of large low speed diesel engine is to accept most of the tensile loads that resulted from the firing forces developed during operation. We have already discussed about this question in the upper question also only. Uh, you, have, you must have seen when we were discussing the tire rod. Now our, our next question is on most modern diesel engines the main and connecting rod bearing receive their lubricating oil by pressure feed pressure feed is the best option it lubricates properly because because it the pressure can be easily controlled and maintained using the pump right fuel injection uh, now let's see what actually pressure feed uh, if we if you will see some images regarding this you 
it will help you remember properly for longer period of time pressure lubrication uh, pressure lubrication right pressure feed type of lubricating oil system pressure feed type lubrication yes you can see this image pressure system of lubrication we will open it and uh, let's uh, oh shit yes you can see in this image uh, from the strainer it goes to the oil pump then it goes to the oil filter from this they goes to the crankshaft position and uh, it lubricates the journal main bearings and the crank crank pin bearing and then goes to the bottom uh, this is also the bottom end bearing and uh, it goes to the top end bearing the, it lubricates over there it also goes to the cam shaft okay now let's move to the last question of today fuel injection pumps using the port and helix metering principle requires the use of cross hatch design lapped plunger and barrel variable stroke variable cam lift i think its answer should be i i am not clear i i am not able to recall it lapped plunger and barrel yes this is the answer okay what is the principle of lap plunger and barrel okay let's see what it is hmm it's a bore type of pump in which plunger and barrels are used yes you can see in this image uh, let's zoom it this is the body this is this is not a correct actual image this is just a disc, uh, description or a, a resemblance of the line diagram or line diagram of that uh, injector right fuel inlet from the fuel gallery and uh, let's see first is the body second is the fuel inlet from fuel gallery and this is a passage we made be what is vertical grooves is being made is made over here a third is the fuel outlet to injector yes the actual injection takes from this path 3 fourth is the delivery valve and this is the delivery valve when it opens the oil uh, the oil goes through passes three and get injected seventh is the spill hole eight is a plunger this is the plunger and nine is the barrel this is the barrel 10 is the return line whatever the extra uh, extra oil uh, is uh, is over there it is re returned through this passage 10 sorry this is the returning spring sorry i got confused 11th is the cam shaft there must be a return line also fourth is a delivery valve there should be a return line okay that's all for today we will discuss the next part very soon